Hello. Have you come to hang out? Oh, oh we, we might have some, might have some flirting going on here. Oh, mate, she's not interested. Hey, what's up guys? It's Em. Today I'm here to basically fill you in on something that's been happening around here, which has been equal parts a complete and utter joy and in other parts a complete misery. Without further ado, I want to talk to you about why I feel you shouldn't buy wild birds as pets. But you're not a wild bird, are you? Look at this facial smushing. Birds as pets, birds in cages. There are some very strong views on keeping birds as pets at all. To me, there is nothing more miserable looking than a depressed bird in a cage. And unfortunately, that is what I'm gonna show you today. A very depressed bird in a cage. There's no other way of putting it. Let me just give you guys a little bit of a backstory because this has been unfolding now for about two and a half months. Just before Christmas, Danny and I visited a pet store because I knew that they had some really nice big Madagascan hissing cockroaches. It is a store that I've been to on a number of occasions and I've always felt fine buying from this particular store. However, this time was different. Um, when I went into the store, I found my Madagascan hissing cockroaches, purchased some and I saw this bird and this bird was a hornbill, a red-billed hornbill, and I've worked with hornbills extensively. The hornbill that I've worked with the most in the past was a hornbill called Horace, he or Horatio. Um, he is an African grey hornbill. I, I know the hornbill. I know what goes into maintaining hornbills. They are super complex creatures. The only thing that will kill a hornbill faster other than a predator is stress. So. I was quite amazed to see a hornbill at the back of this pet store knowing what goes into actually raising a hornbill. And you know, as an exotics keeper, as someone who is pro-exotics when it's done right in captivity, um, I didn't have too much of an issue, but I thought this bird just looks really tatty. What is going on with this bird? And so I spoke to one of the storekeepers there and they informed me that actually he was a wild caught bird. He's not a hornbill um, that was bred in captivity by a breeder or hand raised. He's not a bird that is used to humans. This was a bird which was ordered captured in Africa from the wild and brought to America. Yes, he went through quarantine. No, this isn't illegal. But in my mind, when there are already really good, legitimate hornbill breeders of captive bred animals, which are used to captivity, which haven't experienced the outdoors, which are used to humans and enjoy being around humans the way that a parakeet or a budgerigar would, there's no need to go and collect them from the wild, in my opinion. So. I had a bit of an issue with this bird and I looked at him and he was just the most lifeless thing and it is heartbreaking to see such a kinetic bird which is an incredible flyer. They've got this amazing ability to weave in and out of trees and branches. They are incredible flyers but this bird had ripped off its primary feathers. His primary feathers are the ones that give them lift which actually enable them to fly. He self mutilated his wings because he was in so much stress. So I looked at Danny and Danny looked at me. He just said, no, absolutely not, Emma, not this bird. And I said, I know, I know I, I can't feel this because here's the thing. If you buy a bird or any animal from either a pet store or a breeder or a roadside vendor because you feel sorry for that animal, you're not fixing a problem. You're fueling the problem. You know, I could drive down the street and stop over at, you know, a, a roadside vendor who has puppies or kittens or turtles or whatever and buy them. But that fuels the problem because by giving money to a vendor, you are voting. You're saying, I vote for this. So when you hand over money for any animal, you fuel that trade. Now, I'm not saying that all pet stores or all roadside vendors or all bird breeders are bad because they're not. They're really not. It's the vast majority which are fantastic. But I know this vendor, so I had to learn a bit more. And in the end, I just said, no, I, I can't, I'm not gonna buy this bird. I'm not gonna buy a bird that is probably sick probably riddled with parasites. That's probably gonna end up costing me the next couple of months rent because I need to fix it. Let's just forget it. Somebody will come along who knows something, a thing or two about hornbills and will purchase this bird because it's an expensive bird and will give him a great life. 
and I put him out of my mind. Now, a couple of weeks passed and you know, he had been playing on my mind a little bit, not much, just a little bit. And I thought, okay, well, you know, we need to get some more um, supplies, some more different kinds of diets. So let's go back to the pet store and let's just see. Just put my mind at rest, let's just see. So we go back to the pet store and he is still there and he is in worse condition. At the end of the day, a pet store is not able to give one-on-one -on -one care to a special creature because they have so much to do. Running a pet store, a good pet store, is a very difficult business. You are constantly cleaning and dealing with customers and restocking and placing orders and doing all this stuff that most people just walking into a store have no idea about. And again, I wanna stress this was not a bad pet store. They just stocked the completely wrong animal, a very specialist animal. So we came to an agreement. Bearing in mind, I am not one to buy creatures when I feel sorry for them because I know the reality of buying a sick bird. And the reality is you are most likely gonna lose your money. You can put months and months into a bird and think it's just turning a corner and it dies. That's the reality of wild caught birds. And in the end, I ended up paying him cost. So what it costs to import the bird I ended up paying. So in the end, the pet store didn't make a single dime of profit. In the end, they lost out because they had to feed and light and heat this bird for several months. They also had to cover the quarantine because when you bring a bird into the US, they have to go through quarantine. Like I said, this is not illegal. He is not an illegally smuggled bird, but he is a wild caught bird. And there is a difference between wild caught and illegally smuggled. Now, the other thing as well is I do not believe that you can just fix a problem by scraping off the infected area. You have to treat the root of the problem. So I spoke to the owner and I said, look, my belief is you should not get these birds in again. If you're going to stock such a specialist bird, for goodness sake, go to a breeder. Go to a breeder who can pretty much assure you that the bird is healthy. And by stocking a captive born bird, not only is it gonna be healthier, it's gonna be used to people. Are you more likely to walk into a pet store and consider buying a bird when it's there, proud, relaxed, preening, eating, looking magnificent, or a bird who's like this in the corner, puffed up, worried, that it's gonna get eaten by one of these weird two-legged creatures. So it just makes sense from a business point of view to stock a healthy animal. Long story short, you will not be stocking this particular type of bird again, at least not wild caught. So we came home with this cardboard box filled with a hornbill, a red bill hornbill, and he did not move once in the journey. And I thought, oh my God, in catching him, we killed him. And this is a legitimate worry because just moving a bird that is stressed can kill the bird. Just realize that birds do not cope with stress well and I genuinely thought that we'd killed the hornbill because he didn't move once. Hello, have you come to hang out? Oh, oh we, we might have some, might have some flirting going on here. Oh, mate, she's not interested. So these are captive born birds, which are obviously very, very used to being handled and do not mind doing their business on my hand, as you can see. Oh my God, leave her alone. She said no, she's not interested. So we put him inside a quarantine enclosure, which is where he is still living today, two and a half months later. Let's go and meet Grinch, AKA Grinchy, the hornbill who stole Christmas literally because all our Christmas present money went on him. <laughs> so this is an incredibly random video that I'm shooting right now. I know you're gonna be looking at this going, what? I don't know if this footage will ever go out. If it does, then it means that he made it. Um, and hopefully in a couple of months time, he'll be a completely different bird. This guy I think was imported from Africa. He's in pretty bad shape. Can you see how disgusting his feathers are? Um, and unfortunately, you know, he has suffered quite a bit in, in coming over to the US. We have him under a UV light at the moment because that is really beneficial just to psychologically help the bird to make them feel like they're outdoors. Um, at the moment he's in a quarantine enclosure um, so he's away from our other birds um, but we're going to go out a bit later and try and get him some stimuli, some toys. Um, mirrors can be excellent if you have a depressed bird. It can uh, encourage them to preen. Okay. 
Um, we're also going to go out and get him some melon, papaya, mango, um, and some more brands of uh, low iron pellet food. He needs to molt. He's in terrible condition. Um, his diet that he was being fed in um, the pet shop was not optimum diet. You know, they need low iron pellets. They need a lot of fruit. And they're predominantly insectivorous. So they need to have a lot of insects. And I don't think he was getting that in his diet. I mean, at one point, I think he was being fed dog food. I don't know if he's going to survive. Um, I hope he does. Um, but, you know, grief can do a lot of bad things to a bird. And sometimes birds can just die of, of depression and heartbreak and they just give up. Take it. Come on. Show Emily how good you're being. Good boy. Give me a bun. Good bird. That's it. He's already pulled one of his dresses off. Today is the first day that I've actually left the enclosure de door open. He hasn't wanted to wander out just yet, but he's a very smart bird and he knows that the door's open. But let me show you his progress. So, remember how depressed he was last time? Look at him looking at my hands for food. Cheeky. Um, let me see if I can show you our progress. These are his crypt tonight, and um, he'll actually hop over to get them. So, let me show you. We use a whistle. I use a whistle to tell him that they're coming. Good boy. And I think I should be able to get him to hop over to the other in the other uh, perch. Good boy. So now he associates that that sound with food. Look, he's still checking my hands for more. Um, so although he's not dressed up, he pulled his jessies off and his um, his anklets. Um, but this perch is here, and hopefully in time he'll come and watch what the world is like on this perch. At the end of the day. Pet store owners have families to feed. I understand business. I understand the struggle is real. And if you are a pet store listening to this, I fully support the good pet stores. But just really think about the types of animals that you're stocking. Are your regular customers really going to be able to look after that animal? Just consider that. So for Grinchy, we have his purchase cost. We have his diet cost. We have his enrichment costs, his veterinary costs, which have been pretty big. So overall, so far in the last two and a half months, he's cost over $3,000. $3,000. I would just like to take a moment to give a massive shout out and a very warm thank you to Emily May Maple over at the Palm Beach Zoo in Florida. She is a good friend of mine. Thank you, Emily, for giving me so much fantastic information and also for consulting your bird dietitians over there at the zoo because they've been helping a massive amount. So a mega thank you to everyone over at Palm Beach Zoo and especially to Emily May Maple. Mwah! If you want to keep up to date with Grinchy, you can by subscribing to these videos. I'm going to be showing him in a lot of my upcoming pet life vlogs, so you don't want to miss those. Also, now that the secret's out that we have Grinchy, he will certainly be on my Instagram and my Twitter a lot more. So keep up to date. Follow me over at Emzotic Official on my Twitter and my Instagram. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in another video soon. Bye!